Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an IMO problem from 1961. This problem was proposed by Hungary and it says what conditions must hold on A and B for the solutions to this system to be distinct and positive. Quick info about IMO. IMO is the International Math Olympiads, which started in 1959. A number of countries started it and other countries participated. Roughly about 500 students, six from each country, participate every year in the International Math Olympiads. It's a very long test done in two days, and the whole thing takes nine hours with six problems. So this is one of the easiest questions on IMO, and it's pretty manageable, so I wanted to share this with you. So let's get started. So we're going to be looking for conditions on A and B. A and B are given numbers, and we want this system to have distinct and positive solutions, which means that x, y, z are going to be all different values and they're also going to be positive. So what are we supposed to be looking at? We're going to be manipulating this expression, this system to get solutions and then we're going to be looking for those solutions to be distinct and positive. And at the end we're going to get some conditions in the form of inequalities. All right, so what are we going to look at first? We have the sum x plus y plus z equals a, we have the sum of squares, and we have like the product of x, y. We don't have x, y, z, so it's a different story, but it gives us a chance to relate x, y, and z. Now, you probably already know that I love Vieta's formulas, so we're going to be using them in this problem, and a lot of good ideas. So, here's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take the x plus y plus z and square it. When I square this, I'm going to be getting x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2 times the quantity xy plus xz plus yz. Now we already know that this is a, so this will be a squared. And the sum of squares is b squared. So from here, I can basically find the sum of two-way products, which is helpful while using Vieta's formulas. And I have a separate video on Vieta's formulas. I can also link that down below so you can take a look at it if you're not familiar with Vieta's formulas. Now, from here I can basically subtract b squared and divide by 2, so that gives me xy plus xz plus yz to be a squared minus b squared divided by 2. Okay, So that's the sum of the two-way products, and I already have the sum, but I don't have the product xyz, but that's perfectly fine because I'm going to be doing it a little differently. So since I already have this, and notice that in the problem, the third equation given involves xy. And we have xy in our sum, so we can replace xy with z squared. Again, one of, the, one of my favorite methods is substitution, so I'm going to use that here, replace xy with z squared. Let's go ahead and do it. z squared plus xz plus yz equals a squared minus b squared over 2. Since a and b are given numbers, we kind of have a result for this sum. But what is really significant here is that we can factor out a z. That's beautiful. And when we do, let me write them in alphabetical order. If you don't mind, we're going to get x plus y plus z. And that is equal to a squared minus b squared divided by 2. Now, what does this give me? Well, since I already know the value of x, y, z in terms of a and b, x plus y plus z, I'm sorry. The sum, I know x plus y plus z in terms of a and b, so I can find z from here. What is x plus y plus z? If you go back to the original problem, it's given as a. a is a given number again. So this is a. If you divide both sides by a, you're going to get the value of z from here, which is really cool. z can be written as a squared minus b squared divided by 2a. So I got the value of z. Obviously, my goal was not to solve for z, I, my goal was to find the conditions for which the system has positive and distinct solutions, but finding z would definitely be helpful. So let's go ahead and hold on to that, but for now I can just tell you that you're going to be, you're going to want z uh, to be positive. So how can you make it positive? You can start thinking about that, because at the end we're going to put it all together. Okay, now let's go ahead and find x and y. How do you find x and y if you do know the value of z, right? Well, here's the thing. You know that x plus y plus z is given in terms of a, b, a, and b. So we can find x plus y from here. So here's what we're going to do next. Since we know that 
x plus y plus z is equal to a. This is given, remember, in the original problem. Now I can replace z with what it is. And from here, in other words, x plus y is going to equal a minus z. Let's replace z with what it is and find the value of x plus y from here. So x plus y is going to be a minus z, which is a squared minus b squared divided by 2a. And now if you make a common denominator, you're going to be getting from here 2a squared and then minus a squared plus b squared over 2a. And a squared, this is going to give you a squared plus b squared over 2a. So x plus y is going to be a squared plus b squared over 2a. Now, I haven't found the values of x and y yet, but I'm getting closer because I got x plus y and I have x times y. How do I have x times y? It's also given in the original problem. If you remember, x, y is given as z squared and we do know the value of z in terms of a and b. So from here, we can find x times y. So let's go ahead and write it down. x, y is equal to z squared. It's given. Now replace z with this expression right here and they're going to get the value of x times y. So x times y is equal to z squared, which is a squared plus b squared divided by, excuse me, that should be a minus sign, not a plus sign. I get confused. Plus sign is for the x plus y. This is supposed to be a minus sign, right? x, y is equal to z squared, which is this expression squared. So we're going to square a squared minus b squared over 2a. Let's go ahead and do that. Remember, this is just z, but we need z squared. Okay, great. So now I have x plus y and I have x times y. What is that supposed to mean? It means that by using Vieta's formulas backwards, since you know the sum and the product, you can write the equation whose solutions are x and y. But not to get confused because what are we going to use? Are we going to use x or y? Let's just use another variable. How about u representing x and y? Okay, so u is going to be the variable in our equation whose solutions are x and y. So from Vieta's formulas, the sum is going to go here with the minus sign. So I can basically write this equation as u squared minus a squared plus b squared divided by 2a times u. Remember, the sum of the roots by Vieta's formulas was negative b over a. So in this case, we need a negative sign here. Plus, the product is going to go here. And the product, as you know, is a squared minus b squared over 2a quantity squared. And you should set it equal to zero. So we basically got an equation from here in u, but the solution set for this equation is going to be x and y, because u basically represents x and y here. Make sense? I hope it does, because it comes from here. That's why u represents x and y. Okay, so by solving this equation, in other words, you're finding the values of x and y, and which one is which? Well, they can switch around. Since we have this kind of symmetry with x and y, not with z, basically x and y are interchangeable, or in other words, we have that symmetry, or symmetrical, whatever you want to call that. Okay, now let's go ahead and solve this equation, but why, wait, how do you solve this equation? Well, you can use the quadratic formula. It's that simple, right? So the u values from here, which represent x and y, is going to be negative b. Negative b is going to be the uh, coefficient of u negated. So we're going to get rid of the negative sign. Plus minus the square root of b squared. So we're going to square that, but the negative sign doesn't really matter because we're squaring it, so I'm, I can get rid of that. So it's going to be b squared minus 4ac. But a is 1, coefficient of u squared. So c is the constant term, so I can just write it like this. So here, I'm not doing anything but using the quadratic formula, okay? And this whole thing is going to be divided by 2 because it's 2a. All right, great. Well, when I say 2a, of course, I'm talking about a different a here, not the a we are given here. Okay, anyways, I hope it makes sense. I use the quadratic formula to solve this quadratic equation. Now I got the solutions, the u1 and u2, but they just represent x and y. Okay, makes sense? Now what am I going to do with this? Well, we just got to simplify this. So let's go ahead and simplify the discriminant, what's under the radical first, and then go ahead and plug it in because otherwise it's just going to be messy. So how do you simplify that? Well, I kind of see here a uh, difference of two squares. So let me go ahead and write it this way. This squared minus, and obviously we have a common denominator already, so we don't have to worry about it. We kind of have like a difference of two squares on top and the bottom is just going to be 4a squared. So this is my discriminant, in other words, delta. So let's go ahead and simplify this. 
from difference of two squares. Oops, I forgot to put the square here. Now, how do you factor this? Uh, well, it's going to be like x plus y. If you square root that, you're going to get 2 times this, of course, right? And then that's going to be multiplied by, so this is x squared minus y squared. This is x plus y, and then I'm going to write x minus y. x minus y is going to look like this. And I just need to simplify this all over 4a squared. Again, this is not the whole thing. It's not u. It is just the discriminant. That's why I told you it's going to be very messy if I don't do this. So here, a squared plus 2a squared, that's going to give me 3a squared. b squared minus 2a squared is just going to be b squared, negative b squared. And here I have a squared minus 2a squared, which is negative a squared. b squared plus 2b squared is going to be 3b squared minus a squared. And that's just going to be divided by 4a squared. So we kind of have that kind of symmetry again. 3a squared minus b squared, 3b squared minus a squared. Anyways, let's go ahead and put it, plug it in there and then see what the u values are. And we're going to get the answer from here. So that's my discriminant. Again, it's still messy. But one thing to notice is that when I square root the discriminant, I have 4a squared. So the square root of the discriminant is just going to be the square root of this product divided by 2a. And don't worry about the plus minus sign here because it'll be taken care of by the plus minus sign in the original expression. So let's go ahead and write down u values again. First, I'm going to start off with a squared plus b squared over 2a, which was, which was our negative you know, b value from the quadratic formula. That's going to be like a squared plus b squared over 2a. OK? And then plus minus the square root of delta. So since we said that, we can just take care of this 2a. Well, I'm, I'll probably just write it first and then take care of it in the next step. So we get this product from here. And then that's divided by 2a as well. So that kind of gives me a common denominator, which is kind of nice because now I have a 2 at the bottom, but now we're going to divide um, by 2a and then by 2. So it's going to be divided by 4a. So we can write it like this. a squared plus b squared plus minus the square root of the product 3a squared minus b squared times the quantity 3b squared minus a squared. And then the whole thing is going to be divided by 4a. And this pretty much gives us the x and y values. But again, remember, our goal was to look at the conditions for these solutions to be distinct and positive. Now, what was my z value? Let's go back and find z here. z is a squared minus b squared over 2a. z is a squared minus b squared over 2a. And these are x and y values. Remember that? OK, of course, they can switch around as well. I didn't want to write it separately, but if you wanted to write it, you could basically just write it as, you know, one of the solutions is going to be this one with the plus sign, and then the other one is going to be with the minus sign. OK, I hope that makes sense. I mean, if you want, we can write it as well, but OK, fine, we'll do that. So one of the solutions is going to be like this. Maybe if I don't, some people will complain about it. Like, oh, why didn't you write the solutions for x, y, x, and y, right? OK, so this is going to be my, for example, x1 value, uh, one of my x values like this. And the y value is just going to be the opposite. It's just going to be the negative sign. I mean, not the opposite, but the, you know, the other solution to the quadratic. And then this is going to be my x, y values. And then they could switch around. So if you call these x1, y1, so my solutions are going to be, and this is just a z, my solutions are going to be like this, x1, y1, z, and then y1, x1, z, which means that the y1 is an x value and x1 is a y value. Makes sense because they're allowed to switch around. I hope this doesn't make it too confusing, but let's go ahead and take a look at the main thing. Now, the main thing was we want the conditions, we want the conditions for these to be distinct and positive. What is that supposed to mean? Well, since you want these to be distinct and positive, here's what we need. First of all, z needs to be positive. So we do need a squared minus b squared to be positive and 2a to be positive at the same time. This gives us a squared is greater than b squared and a positive. Now, could it be the other way around? You're going to notice in a little bit that it's not the case because that's going to make our solutions negative. So let's go ahead and take a look at the x values and y values. For the x and y values, the only thing I need is for the discriminant to be positive. Why? Because um, I do want real solutions and I don't I want them to be distinct. So I don't want delta 
equals zero or delta less than zero. I don't want these. In other words, I want delta to be positive. My delta is made up of, uh, let's take, take a look. My delta is this product. And I want this to be positive. In other words, I want this to be positive and this to be positive. Or I want both of them to be negative, but you're going to notice that that's not going to work. Now, if you look at this condition and that condition, this is going to give you, when you add them up, that's basically going to give you something like a squared plus b squared is greater than zero, which is always true. So we don't really need to worry about solving this as a system, but the only thing we need is for these conditions to be satisfied. So I'm going to take one of these conditions and see what happens. So let's go ahead and take this one. So I want 3a squared to be greater than b squared. And of course, I also want a squared to be greater than b squared, right? Okay, so how do you put those together? Well, if 3a squared is greater than b squared, that means a squared is already greater than b squared. But here notice that we do need a squared to be greater than b squared, right? So let's go ahead and put it all together and let's see what that's going to look like. So I do want, actually, I don't want this condition. I'm going to switch them around because I think it's going to be easier to work with this one not with this one. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. Okay, I'm going to be using the second condition. That looks easier to handle. So I'm going to write it as 3b squared is greater than a squared. And I also know that a squared needs to be greater than b squared. And if these conditions are satisfied and a is positive, then we're going to be good. Let's go ahead and take a look. 3b squared is greater than a squared. It's satisfied. Now, 3b squared, 3a squared is greater than b squared. The other condition is already satisfied because a squared is greater than b squared. If you multiply by 3, obviously, it's going to be greater than b squared as well. So that's the end of this. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry about the long solution. Even though I said it's one of the easiest ones, it's a still an IMO problem. But that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.